what's good what's good uh it has been like literally a year <laughs> since i've made one of these uh i think i had a different mic i think it was like still in school at the time um but yeah now i'm i'm here uh i've been kind of like jumping jumping jobs and projects and stuff trying to see if something will stick and now um things have settled down and i'm very motivated to work on drift hamp stuff so yeah if you're watching this in secession right you just went through from episode one to here episode four this will mean nothing to you but <laughs> for like the two maybe three people who uh saw the first three they're gonna be like oh oh yeah um it was yeah so quick recap i kind of just like introed the drift Hunt universe with a level level zeros levels ones whatever um oh sorry yeah level ones are no level zeros um and then I also briefly talked about the timeline for Earth itself. Um, so I'm going to kind of, you know, in present year, which I get to decide, um, what does Earth look like? What does um, each kind of faction kind of do? What, you know, what does it look like? Um, so I'm going to go over that. So. I'm just gonna draw. I'm just gonna draw a little Earth, right? This represents kind of the. I can label it uh, Earth, right? Uh, and then over here is going to be the Moon. Moon. Um, this will make sense as to kind of why I'm doing this. So the, there, there are other planets that come to effect this is a universe after all but the predominant amount of stories that i've made so far do happen on earth um the comic the web comic uh studies in drevtam will happen on the moon uh slash earth there's gonna be some times when it's like oh, we gotta interact with earth um uh yeah okay so uh first things first there on the earth actually i'm going to represent the moon a bit differently i'm actually going to draw the moon like that moon and then split it into two sides so i'm gonna start with the earth though so uh there's kind of two parts of earth right we have you know the earth's crust and then underneath right we have the uh super secretive highly advanced civilization that i was talking about this is unreadable sorry about that um crust uh it's still not very readable okay uh we ha underneath the crust of the earth is the super advanced cyber civilization so i'm just gonna say it's super advanced uh sack sure they're going to have a different name. The name is derived from the Drevtam language, which I simply have to decide and work that through before I make a name, but the name's not important. What you do need to know is that uh, if you remember back in the timeline when the uh, early humans were introduced to Drevtam via level one, right? They enclaved, became more secretive, and then hid away. They hid away uh, underneath the earth, in the center of the earth, and using, you know, their technology, they're able to hide themselves, uh, you know, feign the kind of evidence that would make the people on the surface of the earth think that there's like molten core, um, things like that, right? Like it, it's technology beyond, beyond like what you, you might expect or be able to see. Um, and they are mostly observing. Oh, okay. I should mention they have kind of two goals one more important than the other the first goal being that the level ones gave them the goal of uh preserving like uh they make sure uh i'm gonna say ensure human survival survival I really wish I could write legibly. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, ensure human survival, right? Uh, if you remember, the whole universe is just a sandbox for the purpose of entertaining the um, level ones, really. Um, and that's kind of the SAC, the SAC, as I'm calling them right now. That's they're they're like a main player in that simulator. If that makes sense. They're like a main faction um, to the level ones, uh, and so their primary goal is to just make sure you survive right there's not really a way to win the game but yeah uh and the second goal for them which is more so of them is to just observe uh observe and keep track of um the surface humans i guess we can say observe surface um once again they are secretive they do not know about you know the people on the surface of the earth are not really aware of the people that uh, of the SAC. Um, there are some instances in which that's not true, and there will be a point in which the SAC does reveal themselves to the people on the surface, and then you know you have to deal with the kind of like a there's a lot of play with like the geopolitical implications and the effects of it all. Um, yeah, it's this whole thing, and there's also like primary characters for that as well. Uh, another thing too is they, not immediately, but they eventually become very aware of Letha, who is on the moon. I know I'm speaking, I'm just saying names at this point, but Letha, the main character of the webcomic, is on the moon. I'll talk about that in a second, um, right? And she kind of figures out Drevtown to an extent that SAC is maybe like a bit too concerned about, so they start monitoring her, and then, then way down the line, there's going to be some interactions probably. Um, yeah, but that's kind of the main thing, right? Hyper advanced civilization that's used the technology to hide in the core of the earth, um, as well as uh, like def they have like really, really extra planetary, like way into the um, edges of the universe um, kind of exploration and defense. Uh, they do have like a sector that of of the galaxy that they're trying to defend, right? They said that this is our area. Um, and when attacks is a threat, um, and of course there are people, there are alien races that attack, right? But this is getting way in the future, right? Um, in, in the future in terms of like development of the universe and its story is not necessarily a timeline. Um, cause you know, at current year of whenever that takes place for the universe, they are currently doing that. Um, yeah. Once again, using the technology to get ships from the core, uh, past the crust and, to defend whatever they need to defend afterwards. So, if those are the people that are in the surface, or the center of the Earth. Um, oh, and another, uh, you can also do a lot of fun little stories with like, uh, like, a hollow Earth theory and stuff like that. If anyone ever knows about that, there's a lot of play. And there's a lot of fun things you can do with that. Anyways, um, so yeah, these people are in the center of Earth, right? The crust. I probably shouldn't have wrote that there. It's kind of implied. Whatever. It's a layer of protection between the center and the surface. The people on the surface, right? That's where the kind of uh, that's where you get kind of crazy, right? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say surface. I'll write an arrow to it. Um, surface humans or just humans on surface. A big thing about them is that they've gotten wind of the Drevtem field and in doing so they're like okay there's a potential for you know we can revolutionize and en like energy right this is like a new energy source we've never considered before but a big thing is oh the profit oh like the first person to like actually truly figure out Drevtem field and be able to harness it and use it for either weaponry or energy which may never happen first person who does that they're gonna be the most powerful most rich person in the world and so the earth is basically a giant mess of people trying to do that trying to figure it out and they're trying to do it in many many different ways uh it could come from uh really really unethical experiments um it could come from like I, I think you could do a lot of play with like religious ceremony and things like that, uh, like cults and stuff like that. Um, I have some stuff written for that. Um, it could come from just, you know, even just your like typical research that you might expect today, you know, labs, blah, blah, blah. 
doesn't make the best of stories, but you know, something like that should exist. Um, and I guess I'll write that down. Trying, trying to figure out drift him. Trying to figure out drift him. And to give a hint of how far away from that they actually are, they don't call it drift him. They call it um, the tetrial field. Tet Tetrial field um, discovered by the Tetrial family, or rather the head of the, the particular scientist whose last name was Tetrial. I'm sorry, I can't remember the first name, but that's not important. Uh, who then founds the Tetrial, in dis, uh, the Tetrial Institute, uh, and they ended, they ended up doing some evil shit. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, that's kind of the main thing. So, along the way, right, there, there's kind of this push for, like, more technology, more uh, science, things like that, because we want to figure out the technical field. Um, or rather, the people on the surface want to figure it out. In doing so, at some point, they're like, okay, we should probably use the moon, right? We have technology to be able to get us to the moon. There's a lot of um, experiments and science that have been done on the moon because of low grav, what have you. And so that's what they do. At some point, they colonize the planet, or the moon, rather, and um, the primary kind of um, institute that came from it was called the GLA, right? So, uh, or I should specify first that there are two sides of the moon, of course, because of the moon, our moon is tidally locked, right? So you have the, I'm just going to say NV and the V side, uh, V side, right? Because... We, from Earth, we can't see the non-visible side and then the visible side, right? So it's just the side that faces Earth at all times. And so on the non-visible side, we have the GLA, GLA, which is the Grand Lunar Institute. Um, it is the, it is like the most prestigious, most highly advanced, most coveted kind of institute there is. It's formed a lot after this uh like a uni or the format of it is based heavily off of like a university even though <laughs> they want to be different they want to be quirky so they don't call it a university um nor are there grades or anything like that uh status is status within university is heavily based on your merits within science itself um but then of course there's people who fake it and then they kind of also often get lost in their own sauce um, this is heavily explored uh, in the web comics. I, I won't go too heavily into it, but just know that it's it's like this shiny beacon of like humanity. And an important part is that they put it on the visible side, so that people on the surface of Earth can always look up and see. You know, they can see it, assuming things like pollution or gas or whatever the fuck isn't like actually clouding the things. Because once again, like the surface of the Earth is kind of a shithole because of like. <laughs> all the experiments and things like that of course there's pockets of like normalcy there are pockets of things that uh you might expect to see today or even like things of a higher quality but uh it's a mess right geopolitics are a mess because everyone's trying to figure out this tetrial field which is actually the drift hand field um yeah well so they could see the gla uh letha starts letha the main character for the webcomic does start on earth right she is born on earth somewhere i don't know it's not really matter where at the moment you know um right letha right she starts on earth through simply fucking up ends up on the moon and then decides to because she's already there uh decides to kind of just like try to partake in the uh the festivities the uh, you know she tries to make a name for herself in gla uh by you know, once again, exploring Drevtam and fucking up along the way. Um, and then meets all the other people there who have different origins, right? Um, and also, I separate visible and non-visible side on the moon for a reason. So the visible side, right, that's the side they're concerned with visually in terms of uh, perception and optics. So it's nice, right? It's kind of the glitzy side. Um Unfortunately, that means that the non-visible side, man, it sucks, right? Where the visible side was basically a bunch of nerds trying to make their own utopia in space and kind of succeeding, uh, 
albeit for often not the most ethical reasons. Um, the non-visible side, man, that's where the DGENs, right went, right? There's constant war. There's constant uh, infighting. It's dark. It's cold. Um, if there's like some kind of industry that is really unsightly for any reason, they put it on the other side. Um, you know, it, it's a nice little you know not only is it the dark side of the moon but also thematically and things like that it's also darker um yeah sac doesn't really care about the moon it's there it's whatever they know there's people on there uh they're more concerned with like keeping on the crust and uh guarding like other planets oh another thing i forgot to mention is that the inside of the um interplanetary home base for the sac is uh, also layered, right? So they, you know, they they do different layers depending on what need they have, and it kind of increases in protection as you go deeper, right? Uh, you know, you have I, I, the most. I've always pictured the most outer layer to be kind of like the transport layer, right? That's if that's like the staging area for like getting things outside of the planet. Uh, bringing them in, bringing them out, things like that. Then you have things, of course, like the like habitation set centers. I also have this idea of there's a layer for, in case of catastrophic failure of the top, they can just kind of like blow, <laughs> blow all the layers above this layer off, and um, that layer is like a uh, habitation zone. It's like a a preserve, right? And they also do their own research and studies onto like uh, wildlife and things like that for like an entire basically planet inside a planet in which they can kind of control all the weather, all the different things that might happen on a planet they can do and recreate there and keep it as a backup in case the planet needs to need to reset. I'm trying to think of what else I can mention here. Anyways, yeah. So to summarize, right, we have the super advanced civilization, they house themselves and have their home base on the inside of the planet Earth um, and use the technology to be able to hide themselves, but they also uh, have a lot of wars and stuff way out into the galaxy because their main goal is to protect the human race, which unfortunately there's a lot of uh, extraterrestrials that do not want that to happen, right? They want the human race dead because they also have their own stake in the game as brought about by the level ones. The surface of humans don't know about SAC at all. And they are tr all collectively trying to figure out the Tetrial field so that they can be the biggest, baddest person on the planet. Um, they do this through varying means, some cool, some not. And then on top of that, you have the moon. The moon has the nice glitzy side and then the bad, uh, scary side. Um, the webcomic, which I do plan on actually starting to draw, it'll be really scrappy. It'll be, um, sorry, let me get ahead. Before I get ahead of myself, on on the glitzy side of the moon, you have the Grand Looter Institute. That's very important. Um, and yeah, okay. So, in terms of what needs to be done, so uh, things once again, things are kind of like settling down. So I do, and I, I've I've had a lot of motivations to start working on this kind of stuff again. Um, so one thing I will be doing is actually starting the webcomic, um, cause a lot of it's written out. It's just a matter of like doing it and like getting it out there. It's not going to be pretty, you know, I'm going to say this right now. Uh, I don't have the time, um, or anything like that to actually really sit down and make sure all the pages are nice and inked and colored and things like that. It's going to be legible, right? Like I'm not going to be, I'm not like... You know, it's not like, oh, here's a, here's a face and he's, some guy's punching another guy, right? It's, it's, it's not going to be, you know, obviously there's still going to be like effort into like perspective and, um, faces. I want, I'm going to make it legible, right? Uh, but you know, it's going to be scrappy because I'm more concerned about getting the story out rather than making sure that the, um, art is something you might see on a printed page. Maybe in the future, 
I could hire someone or I myself can go back through and like uh, pretty up the pages. Right, like I'm drawing a face right here. It's gonna be something like that, right? I, I feel like that's still very clearly a face. <laughs> at, least, at least I hope other people could read like that. You know, um, shoulder, neck, other shoulder, like down. Right, it's legible enough, I guess is the way I'll, I'll, I'll say it. Um, it'll look like that. Um, I'm also working on some animations for the characters in the webcomic. Uh, and they're just silly, fun, goofy things just to get the word out. Um, granted, I'm probably putting too much, they're probably too difficult <laughs> for, for me who has no animation background. Um, but it's fun to learn. And I love the idea of making like little music videos and stuff like that. Uh, so that's what I'm be working on. Um, and yeah, stay tuned uh, for the three people that watch this. If you want to keep it keep up to date about all that kind of stuff follow my twitter um which is it should just be uh ghost underscore vendor uh capital g capital v i don't think the capitalization matters um yeah thank you see you in the next one i don't know what the next one will be or or when where are you